This lesson deals with Thevenin's theorem. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 3, starting on page 25. Let me state Thevenin's theorem. A two-terminal linear circuit with sources can be replaced by the open circuit voltage in series with the input resistance of the circuit with all of the independent sources set equal to zero. Well, that's a mouthful. Let me do this in terms of pictures. If I have a linear circuit and I can draw them into two boxes, I'll call this my source box and my load box, although this could have sources in it too, I can replace this box by a single voltage source and a single resistance that has the same effect at terminals A and B as it did in the original circuit. And this is a new circuit replacing the old one, but it has the same effect. In other words, it's an equivalent circuit. The value of V Thevenin is found by disconnecting the load circuit and finding the voltage across the open circuit. We sometimes call this the open circuit voltage besides the Thevenin voltage. To find the resistance R Thevenin, you take this box and set all the independent sources equal to zero. Short voltage sources, open current sources, and look back in and you'll see series and parallel combinations of resistances. Find the value of R Thevenin and that's what's gonna go over here. Now, why is this true? Let's take the box L off and put in place of it a current source. I'll call it I test. This current source is capable of having all possible values of current. Let's solve this problem by using superposition. Let's find the voltage across these terminals. I'll call that V test due to just this one source. In other words, set all the other independent sources equal to zero. Inside this box are just resistors. The ratio of V test prime, again, due to this source, divided by I test is the resistance looking into terminals A and B. That's our definition of Ohm's law. I'll call that R Thevenin. I'll just cross multiply. V test prime is R Thevenin times I test. And I'm going to find V test double prime due to all the other sources. You set this current source equal to zero. That's an open circuit. And find the voltage across here due to the remaining sources. Now again, you can take them one at a time. We'll just take the collective total and there'll be a voltage here. I'll call that V test double prime. But that's the voltage with having an open circuit because I'm setting the current source equal to zero. That's our definition of V Thevenin. Again, it's also called the open circuit voltage or VOC because it's the value of the voltage when the load's removed. Let's put the results together. The voltage V test across the terminals of our circuit when we started our proof, we've shown is equal to V test prime plus V test double prime. V test prime was R Thevenin times I test and V test double prime was V Thevenin. Can you construct a circuit that has this same set of equations with the same test conditions? So I had a voltage cross here called V test, the beginning of the proof, and a current I test. And now I have to get a summation of two voltages. Sounds like a series combination. So if I test flows through a resistor, call it R Thevenin, we create this term, and then we add to that a voltage. The rise in voltage here would equal the drop of I test times R Thevenin plus V Thevenin gives us the same equation as our test circuits were, and so it's therefore equivalent between terminals A and B. Let's do an example. Suppose I have a circuit with a voltage source, a current source, and four resistors, and that's hooked up to a load. Let's take what's in the yellow box and find the Thevenin equivalent circuit. Let's use that Thevenin equivalent circuit then to find the power absorbed by putting a 10K resistor for the circuit L, and a second load here, of a battery of five volts. By simplifying this circuit, we'll see that the analysis of this box is pretty simple. But if we were to leave all this together and put the 10K load in here, then remove it and put a five volt battery, there'd be a lot more steps to solving that particular problem. Let's find the Thevenin equivalent circuit. Our circuit on the last page has two sources, so we could use superposition to solve for the Thevenin voltage. Let me set the current source equal to zero. So I have a voltage source, two resistors and two more resistors. I'm going to find the voltage V Thevenin due to the first source. Now, because there's an open circuit here, there's no current coming or leaving, so there's no voltage across here. Likewise, no current coming or leaving, so no voltage there. The voltage here is the same as the voltage here. In other words, the rise in voltage would equal the drops around the loop. But since there's no voltage here, no voltage here, this rise in voltage is just equal to this voltage. What is the voltage V Thevenin prime? Well, I've got the same current in these two resistors, because there's no current here, I use the voltage divider rule. 6K over 6K plus 3K times 15 is the voltage across these terminals, which is also the voltage across here. We're going to call that V7 and prime. 
6 over 9 times 15 is 10. The battery equal to 0, put the current source back in, but when you set this equal to 0, the 3k is now in parallel with the 6k. Could take the product over the sum, product would be 18k squared divided by the sum of 9k, one of the k's cancels and I get 2k. No current here, no current here. This voltage is the same as the voltage across these three elements. And what's that voltage equal to? We'll call it V theven in double prime. It's going to be equal to the current in this direction times the 2k resistance. But the current in this direction is a minus 2 milliamps. Minus 2 milliamps times 2k. K's in the milli cancel, you get minus 4 volts. Add up the results. V theven due to the first source was 10 volts. Due to the second source was minus 4 volts. Summation is equal to 6. I'll set all the sources equal to zero. Let's really just look back in this last picture. We'd set the voltage source equal to zero. Setting the current source equal to zero, that would just be an open circuit. So I've got that same 2K resistance now in series with the 3K and the 4K. These have no effect on the voltage, but they do affect the resistance. We see 3K plus 2K plus 4K, so 9,000 ohms. So now we've got the Thevenin voltage and the Thevenin resistance. Let's put it together. On original problem, found the open circuit voltage from 1 to 2. Put this together in the same order. And that means that the plus sign is near that terminal 1 and the minus is near terminal 2. And we have a 7 in resistance of 9K. Put the different loads on. Taking this fairly complicated circuit, replaced it by just two elements. And now we can analyze a much simpler circuit. Put a 10K load here. Find the power in the 10K resistance. A lot of ways you could do that. You could use a voltage divider to find the voltage, since these share the same current. 6 volts times 10k over 10k plus 9k is the voltage across terminals 1 and 2, which is the terminals of the 10k resistor. 6 times 10 over 19 is 3.1579 volts. Power is V squared over R. Get 997 microwatts. Do the same problem with a different load. Again, we have a very simple circuit, one loop. With 5 volts here, I can find the current in this element, by thinking of this as a common connection or ground, and the voltage across this element is going to be 6 volts minus 5 volts, and the current would then be that voltage divided by 9k, and that current will come into this battery. It'll give me a power absorbed to the voltage times the current. 6 minus 5 over 9k is 111 microamps. Multiply that by 5, and you get 555 microwatts for the power consumed by this 5-volt battery. And this is Thevenin's theorem.